Once in the old place, Marion Christensen had an oven explode in her face. God, that was scary. She was all right, but we all were all so scared for her. She had to go to the hospital and was recuperating for weeks and weeks and weeks. A field mouse had made a nest and had closed up the vent. I'll tell you one thing, it never happened again. We all checked the ovens all the time so that didn't happen. Once in the old place, we were snowed in and we had 150 people for two days and one night. We were really running out of food by the time we were rescued. Uh, one lady was pregnant, oh God, and they took her out uh, by snow plow. Somebody came by and they took it. She was the only one they took out. Nobody else. No, sorry, you got a date. That Sorry, we're not doing that. We're doing roads. So they took her out. Very dramatic. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen, Gladys and I made pan pancakes. Well, we sold everything out. And we, we, we didn't take money. They would just leave money. But we made pancakes till there was no more batter or syrup. And you know, some people that were stuck there came back to the kitchen and said, you know, I don't have any money, but I'm going to send it to you. Okay, we would like this, we would like that. Boy, the chickens went, the hamburgers went, everything went. I mean, when they stopped there, they had to do something, so they ate and drank. Now, the old place had a couple of robberies. Once the robber made everyone go into the men's washroom in the bar room, and as there were 14 people, oh my gosh, can you imagine? I don't know how that, I can't imagine how that happened. It was very crowded. The bartender was Larry Brown, and he stood on the flush box. And Wilma Jane Wojciechowski had served the robber chicken, and she said to him, I hope you choke on a chicken bone. <laughs> and he shot his gun up towards the ceiling. Boom! <laughs> I'll tell you, everybody moved faster into the washroom. <laughs> Fourteen people closed the door. Then the robber said, don't move for 30 minutes or I will shoot through the door. Well, 14 people in a tiny washroom. Finally, Larry Brown on the flush box. He said, I don't know about you folks. I cannot stand the smell in here, and I'm leaving even if he shoots me. I don't care. Of course, the robber was gone. <laughs> oh, gosh, we laughed about that so much. Once a robber came early in the morning and took a police officer who had come to help us, he took the officer as a hostage. He put the gun to the officer's head and pulled the trigger three times and it didn't go off. Oh my God. Later, after the robber was apprehended, the police pulled the trigger once and it did go off. Oh my. Once a bus boy was fired and he broke in at night and took whiskey and cigarettes and he was found when the police came in the morning and followed his footsteps in the snow to his farmhouse close by. Can you believe that? Wow, he had a lot of brains, didn't he? <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. I know he didn't go to jail. Probably got a good talking to. People were more lenient at that time. They didn't sue and they didn't try to put people in jail for our one mistake. So this uh, tape will come to an end pretty soon and we'll turn it over. But well, I'll keep talking. You never know how long you can go. Jan Darby was always in a fast run. She was a fast waitress. Blanche Harms was so nice. And we had three sisters working for us, June and Marty and Alfreda Judy. Now her husband Harold was one of the race drivers and Alfreda had an obsession with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, the first thing, the second thing, and the third thing, and all day long. <laughs> um, Mary Hess had the big brown eyes, and Marilyn Farrell was a tiny dynamo. Margie Pauls, LaDonna Sorensen, Marianne Gawley, Betty Robertson, Rose Standish, Oh, I wish I could remember others. All these girls worked so well together and had so many beautiful friendships. 
and we had two